And we're a legitimate podcast, everybody. Yay. I feel like that in and of itself wow. is the, the debut premiere of our new uh, Casually Hardcore podcast introduction. So uh, <laughs> well, but it, I had this, I, 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 I sketched this all out a long time ago and I worked with some very talented uh, artists as well to help me accomplish this and I didn't let anybody know I was doing it. Wow. <laughs> so, it is really cool. Thank you intense. very much. Yes, so uh, that's going to be what we run at the start of every uh, Casually Hardcore podcast and so as we move forward, as we develop as a uh, as a podcast, I really want to thank uh, all our Patreons and everybody who uh, all, all our members, all of the people in our Discord community, you guys um, make this so much, uh, so much fun to kick back and not just talk uh, into a camera, but be able to talk and engage with you guys. And one of those things, and with the theme of this podcast, episode 13, lucky 13, if you will, as long as the power doesn't go out of this house, um, the, uh, <laughs> which it did once, like when I was live stream, I was like, and the power's out. Um, so with that, we're going to be talking about the uh, kind of a video that I put out, a uh, let's discuss about did Final Fantasy XIV introduce a pay to win system with the new bike mount. And this originated because there was a conversation going on in Discord, and I thought it was an interesting topic, uh, but it is a very <laughs> apparently controversial topic, one that like, really caught me off guard. I was just like, huh, it's interesting. What do you guys think? And then it was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> you are a horrible human being and should die in a fire. It's like, okay. <laughs> I was just like, because I was hanging out with Chris while he was drawing his picture, and I was completely oblivious that like... I was like, maybe we'll get a couple hundred views. We'll call it, you know, it's like, maybe we'll, it did. The best thing about it, it, it did spark a really awesome uh, conversation around what is pay to win. And I think that's what the theme of this podcast is going to be. We've got six comments from uh, that we took from the vast majority. I mean, there was like hundreds and hundreds of comments uh, and lots of really good discussion. A lot of really good uh, positive responses in regards to, you know, just really engaging with one another and obviously a couple that aren't so, um, you know, favorable. So if we have time, we'll talk about some of those other uh, pieces today. But I want to introduce our guest, uh, Chili. Uh, you know him. He's been on the show before. Uh, and he uh, he's also, we hung out with him and did a, a reactions video uh, in, uh, in uh, Vegas. So I'm glad that you eventually were able to get home, Chili. Uh, oh, yeah, welcome. that... that, that. 21 hours travel. <laughs> so it makes my like four hour flight like, you know, nothing. Like, oh my gosh. Like, if only they had a fan fest closer to home for them. <laughs> some, well, it, something to catered to the EU community. Well, to be fair, I play on North American yeah. service. So it's. That's true. I mean, I've got a primal an A for character. So. So, got a question then for you. Um, yeah. As a kind of our kind of our lead in intro is that. Uh, primal aether data server ki uh, crystal and then you have uh you know uh, light coming over to uh to eu what's what's your take what's your hot take on all that i feel like it's a great way to make sure that because there's so many big serve yeah there's a couple of big servers and then the rest are kind of like dead um it's a great way to sort of split up the amount of players on the service to try and help with the um them from crashing when like the new expansion launches or yeah. when like big patches launch it will help um sort of like smooth out rather than having big clumps of players and chris is back <laughs> so with that like chris you've been uh under the weather wet wetter under the weather very extremely <laughs> and uh so welcome back dude <laughs> i know i apparently so I appreciate that I got really sick last week, but I appreciate that um, getting really sick was after going to all the conferences and getting to see my family because I traveled nonstop for the first three quarters of November. And then basically my body saved like everything I was exposed to on every plane and every kid I was around. And then all at once, they all hit me. And every day I woke up with like three new symptoms and all of the old. So every day I was like, hey, can't worse than this and then i woke up the next morning thinking i was one step closer to death um but now i just have like normal kleenexes and cough drops and i'm fine he's back he's healthy he's, he's i would have been worried i was contagious enough to get you guys sick over the internet <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole new weird a whole new uh weird virus that'd be the worst thing that happens to like to humanity it's like you actually get sick and it's like we found the source it's chris from work the game and it ends up that's how like our, we, that's how we get immortalized like it's oh it's the work the game virus the w2g uh you know oh All my I'm gosh i'm gonna suggest is 
when you come back from a 21 hour trip don't think oh okay well the first thing i'm going to do is do two podcasts <laughs> you did that though <laughs> yeah i did literally two hours after i got back it's like okay time for unchain and moogle go around good nice dude you are no. uh, a working don't, machine you are uh, man it. it's insane so um before before we dive in i guess in our main type i just do want to kind of uh let you guys and especially let chili's here um what are you what, what are your projects right now like what are you playing what are you working on what are your goals um uh in the game like are, are you last we talked you cleared all the savages you've met, leveled up all the all your jobs or something like that or maybe that was before 4-4 four, four. so what 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 are you playing in the world of 14 or what are you playing just in general uh me or chris it's you 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 uh, okay Oops. um right now i'm still working on savages we cleared the last tier uh, but we're currently working on O12S. Um, so, but our DPS and tank have got some issues in real life, so we're having to pug. So that slowed us down a little bit. But you know, real life comes first mm -hmm. always. Um, apart from that, just yeah, work for PSU.com. The BGAs are tonight. Yes. So I'm going to be busy covering the news tonight with that. So they're supposed to like they did a really good job last year with the VGAs, and so I'm actually really actually yeah. anticipating this year. I hope that they are able to take and deliver at least what they delivered last year. But the, the goal was that you know they're hopeful that they can continue. I'm to hoping build that Sony them. brings something interesting because we know that Sean Layden is going to be there now. So that's um, it. Would be interesting if they did because they canceled obviously the, the PlayStation experience. They yeah. they're drawing out yeah. of E3. You know, are are they going yeah. the route of Nintendo? I mean, that's a topic in and of itself. You know, whole, whole podcast yeah. show is like, what is Sony doing? Uh, Chris, how about you, man? Like, uh, why don't you let everybody know what you've been playing uh, as you've so, been off recovering from? <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm right now. I I got in with some guys that I had met at BlizzCon that I had known online for a while, and being in real life, they kind of pressured me into raiding with them next year. Uh, so that's January. So it'll be my first time back into WoW rating since I think I last rated with these guys in Cataclysm. So it's it's been five or six years since I was in like a non LFR raid that wasn't just like a pickup group. Uh, so that'll be my first time to get back and have to buy flasks and all that. And so you know they have a series of things they're requiring, um, which is basically that your Azerite grind, kind of your Eureka equivalent grind is up to a certain speed, that your reputations with the equivalent of kind of your beast tribes is done, and um, and that you have the resources to buy all the needed like consumable items. Uh, so I have been doing that, and then I've been getting in impulses just to get used to hard content again, just so that I am situationally aware and I'm not standing in things. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. And then I'm about to actually start getting back into 14 again, because I think my brother is coming back to the game this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sweet. Forward to playing with him. Yeah. So yeah, that's news we haven't shared with you, Jelly, is that Adam is making his triumph from return to, to the Dragoon. <laughs> Yay. Adam, Adam's going to come back and play Dragoon. And I told him that I would kind of level my uh, Dark Knight, my last tank. And then if I finish my Dark Knight and he's still got leveling to go, then I'll come as my white mage and start working on a healer. So, um, Jelly, I have another, so I have a, uh, I have a friend, her name is, is Jill. Yeah. And he is a incredibly talented healer who plays okay. with us and talks trash about how tired she is of using her priest to literally grip me out of things that I'm standing in. And all it makes me think is that I have the same person in both games. He's <laughs> tired of pulling me out of things. And it's just like, I swear to goodness, if you, if you just get out of it uh so she has been patiently helping me learn to tank in that game and uh and i've been dpsing and in pluses with her so that's been a lot of fun. Uh, it reminds me of one of our healers we've got another um our main healer called ty i have trouble during one phase of omega because i have to stand behind it because i'm a monk and you have to run to the corner but because of the delay of my connection i sometimes don't make it so she now has rescued Macro just to pull me over for that mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> Shows you. Come on. All right. So, um, man, and for me, I guess if I was going to share, just like I just finished capping a monk, which caps all of my battle classes, hey. which feels really good. I'm working on the controller guide now, and I've been playing a lot of Blue Mage and Final Fantasy XI with the community, and we've been having a real good time. And uh, And I'm really looking forward to Smash tomorrow. I mean, it's like... Uh, despite all like the issues that we've seen, we were kind of talking about in the pre-show with Fallout 76 and just just the frustration that kind of has built up this last year. Like 2018 has probably you know been just an amazing year for games. 
uh, and being able to engage with the community. So it's and then we're going into 2019 for you know Shadowbringers and um, I, I keep wanting to blend Stormblood and, and Shadowbringers and be like uh, you know Stormbringers or Shadow uh, <laughs> <I've done that. laughs> Shadow Storm or or something like that nature. Um, SB <laughs> just SB SB one SB two. So uh, with that, though, we're going to dive into the main topic and talking about did Final Fantasy XIV introduce a pay to win system um, with this bike? <coughs> and, uh, you know, we've got a lot of comments we want to go through. So uh, we didn't really pregame like who would uh, address which comment. So uh, I kind of try to group the comments by kind of a category or a theme talking about, uh, you know, in, in different areas. So uh, do I have a volunteer for comment number one? Who wants to read that? I think that's you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna. Well, the, the only reason I was looking for volunteers because I was like, how do how would I pronounce this? Sin Con John. Okay, I think I did a good job. Uh, Sin Con John says, "Pay to win." Do you even know what pay to win means? Because this video shows that you have no clue what it means. And I want to group that. Um, I want to group that with Miles White here, uh, who writes. Uh, the problem with pay to win is that people don't agree on a definition and when no one can agree on a definition, you'll always have disagreements because the foundation is flawed. Personally for me, pay to win is anything that provides functionality in a game that you could not get otherwise throughout grinding or playing. So for me, Guild Gold doesn't seem to be pay to win because I look at those things as time sinks. Yeah, I could agree that the game should allow you to bypass time sinks with dollars, getting mount speed sooner with dollars versus grinding versus doesn't seem pay to win to me. Uh, but two seater mounts being locked behind a paywall seems pay to win. I guess my biggest gripe is paying 15 bucks a month and not having the accessibility or potential to unlock all functionality. I could uh, pay uh, my $15 a month uh, until the end of the game dies and complete all the content and never get a two seater mount because or but I could get one for 30 bucks. Two seaters don't provide any meaningful utility to the owner. They do not uh, really have an issue with the community, but they uh, but to say that they don't impact the game is ignorant. When Eureka came out, those two seater mount guys were making bank taxing dudes around. I charged some guy two million gil just to ferry him around from fate to fate for an hour. And so with that, we're gonna jump back into uh, like if I pick the right. There we go, perfect. The right scene. Yeah. And so um, so we have the concept. The question is pay to win. What is it? And then obviously, uh, Psycon John's asking me uh, what, if, that he doesn't think that I know what it means. And then we have Miles kind of following that up with the concept of the problem is, is that people don't have a unified definition. So if it at all possible, if we can make internet history today, can we come up with a pure 100% definition that everybody will accept about what sure. pay to win means? We so, shall do it. We shall. So I'm going to start with our guest, Chili. So um, Chili, what is pay to win and, you know, I want to know. To me, it's anything that you can't get in the game that gives you a major advantage over players that didn't spend the money. What would be a major advantage then? To be fair, I would say the two people mount is kind of an advantage, um, especially with the flying and swimming nowadays. Swimming, not so much, but flying probably. Just because the people that can fly... Um, can pick up other people that can't fly and take them to the spots that they would have to wait for in the game to get to. Because, mm -hmm. you know, though, if I'm right in um, Heaven's Ward, you can't actually access certain areas because there's like, you know, things that block it. So it's, you can't skip ahead to different zones. But you could, say, get all the um, items that you need to fly before you're supposed to be able to get them. So... But you still have to do the side quest and the main story, so you're not really winning. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things that it could be if they screw up in the future. <laughs> it's a it's a weird gray line. Yeah, it's a weird fine line. Chris, what, what what about you, man? I think it's I think it's giving access to any content in trade for money that cannot be reasonably achieved by any player that did not pay the money. So you know, selling gill, it's like, well, if, if you're selling a million gill for $15, that's, that's not going to get you anything that I can't farm up. There's not even any good use for gill right now. So they could sell right. unlimited gill for money right now. And because yeah. gill doesn't have a real use or advantage, I would say that it's not pay to win. But like, if, if 
you know, there's going to be a mount available behind a quest line and that quest line is 6,000 hours long or it's $20 mm -hmm. then that's paid in. if that quest line is 25 minutes long or six hours long, then all of a sudden it's like, well, you're, you're, you're saving them one play session. Uh, and so I don't really think that that's pay to win. So, so, so obviously degree has a, has a kind of a, a weight to it. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we saw in kind of the battlefront stuff, right? Uh, was, that was about, uh, the EA stuff with the loot boxes battlefield it, yeah, yeah. it is battlefield so it wasn't it's it is oh. accessible they said mm -hmm. those items you can get them they're just rare drops that are hidden behind these just thousands of hours, hours of work and luck five years you can have it or you can have it today for 15 dollars. what do you say chili i also want to add that um to the community adds its own pay to win features I don't know about you, but I remember back in the day where people would sell Ramu clears, sell coil clears. They still sell clears. Like, yeah, but I'm clears... just saying it's not as big as it used to be, I feel like, at least on Ultros. You'll yep. see the occasional party finder, but it used to be a lot more. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's it's... In -game money, yeah. right? But so that's in-game, you know. It's still paying to win, in a way, even if it's not real-life yeah. money. It's, it's definitely, I think you have a, a, a realistic argument. It's like, are you... Uh, it, uh, I think for, like to kind of jump in on on this because like when Julie watched the the video, she kind of looked at afterwards. She looked at me. And she's like, "Well, I guess it really just depends on your definition of winning." It's like every player has that different level. For her, she's a collector, so she's like, "The fact that I can't get all mounts, the fact that the, like, can I oh, buy yeah. like, can I does this mount have even a one in one billionth chance of dropping randomly in the game? Uh, because there's not that potential. The only way if she wanted to." achieve her goal of winning to collect all the mounts, she would have to pay for that. Now, the, the general consensus, the, the biggest you know one, I'm, I'm gonna jump us to, into our third comment real here, because I think it's also really uh, telling for some of the community is that- uh, Can that... I just add one thing? Oh, please, we... go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Jelly Bean Sugar said, oh, it's really big on Sarg Terrace. It's not in-game money. Yeah, I've seen and heard of the people that sell clears, mm -hmm. uh, Ultimate and such, where you have to PayPal them the money. Yeah. That's that's a that's a that's a thing too, and some people, um, you know, have gotten I'm not in trouble for names that. on who it is. No, we're but... not we're not calling people out here, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, but no, that's a really good point. Like whether it's in game, whether it's that, it's you know, it, there is still like to Miles's point, like it, there is this un, you know, there, there, it, it, it kind of varies person to person. So, if we, free play TV says work to game, the only thing that would ever be paid to win in this game is if it gives you an advantage in either progression, PvP, crafting, or gathering, gearing. You could argue that crafting fully slotted gear sets can give you an edge on progression, but even there's the faster ways to make up uh, money with retainers. Again, unless they get fully geared up, while everyone has to sit through weekly lockout, uh, noting that the game is remotely pay to win. And to and so on that note, because like they bring up retainers, and some people also brought up retainers as a concept, right? And Chris says no. I I, I agree with Chris. But we've had retainers and you pay monthly for them. The only thing a retainer besides the inventory space gives you is it gives you market space. And now, Chris, you made a really good, uh, we had a conversation about this earlier this week, talking about the sheer amount of work that it would take to like to be to be winning, especially because you already made one point that what is Gil really worth at some point? Like at like right now we have a house, we just we just get enough gill, and then eventually we just give it away because it's like I'm not using it. Here you go. You know. So, Chris, go ahead and uh, why don't you share your thoughts about um, what you were talking with me uh, with so retainers and, and retainers. Characters. Retainers can't be pay to win because retainers are accessible. And people say, "Well, but I have, I only have two, and so somebody can outdo me on the market." Yes, but there are eight characters created per account. You unlock your retainers at a very reasonably low level especially for anybody that remembers what it took to unlock cross glass skills so to go get <laughs> retainers on all eight characters on a single server and now that we're going to have world visit systems if you have one friend willing to act as a go-between you could have characters trade e items even across servers by having one of your characters give it to them visiting them and then them coming back to you and giving it to you on your server now all of a sudden you could have five servers with eight you have 80 characters with two retainers a piece that is so many listings across that many servers there is no way you can fill all that now yes if you paid money you could have convenience you could have it all on one character but to say that you don't have access to more retainers 
is is just it's either a lack of knowledge how easy it is to get more retainers as another character on your account or it's just laziness because the problem the reason i don't have multiple characters is because a i'm willing to pay for extra retainers and b i don't have any use for gill i have yet to look down and say yeah I, I really wish i had more gill than this and could i spend it if i had it sure i could buy minions i don't have i could right, buy right. there's always something to spend it on but there's nothing i want there's nothing that i'm like yes mm -hmm. i'm going to log in every day this week and i'm going to do x task um and so i just don't really see how any amount of paying for gill is winning right now because i don't see any like reliable and consistent sync if they put something in game where for a million gill you can buy a reroll token, which is something that exists in WoW, but it's not gotten in this way, um, kind of. So you have this million gill, and you can go buy a reroll token. And what a reroll token allows you to do is if you go into a weekly lockout and a piece of gear drops, and it's not the piece of gear you need, and you receive it, you can reroll it, and it'll pick a different item off the drop table, which theoretically gets you to the gear you need off that content in less weeks. And then that token is sold for some amount of gill, then that's going to give me a reason to go out and get gill. But until they introduce some system like that, where I have a reason to dump my gill into my character, I'm just going to keep using my gill on like, oh, my friend joined the game. Mm -hmm. Here's enough money to get you through your leveling experience very comfortably. And, and from a progression perspective, and, and this is By something way, Callan kind of points out. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chili. I would love that on Savage. <laughs> I feel, I feel like, right, we've been doing Savage for like several months now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this new tier. And our Bard has not got a single drop. Oh, poor Bard. Because. Uh, uh, Why because, the world exists in WoW. Well. <laughs> yeah. Because. Um, and you can buy it with honor. You can buy it with. So you can buy it with PvP tokens. Yeah. You can buy it with gold. You can buy it with. Yeah, gear. you can buy items with books. Yeah. So. But. Once you've seen a drop in Savage, you're locked out for the week. It is a bonus drop, Zoella. Yes, it works a little yeah. different than what I described. So what it is, is you get an additional roll on the boss. Nice. An additional loot roll. Hmm, That's how it actually yeah. works. It's it's a chance token. Um, you can only get access to so many per week. And each yeah. one you buy, if you want to buy another one the same way, it gets more expensive. It's it's a whole system. But until they do something like that that interacts with Gil, what do you use your Gil on, Chili? Um, potions and food. Potions and food. Potions and food. How much money does it take per week to keep a savage raider caught up on potions and food? Three hundred to four hundred k. I'd say. Yeah, and obviously that would. If I'm doing from nine ever. till twelve, of course mm -hmm. that is, uh, because the potions are about seventeen thousand on my server each. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, I, one one thing though is that, and the Callan, Callan kind of puts this out in chat, and, and it's it's true because it, it echoes kind of what Chris is saying, and what like I and I agree is that um, at most Gil will get you uh, caught up for the current uh, raid, yeah. but it's not as good or better than anything else. There's no way to right. win in this game with Gil in the terms of progression because progression is still like. Uh, at most, they've introduced a system with the the crafted gear can get upgraded. We should see that in four five, which is really cool, yeah. which is really exciting. I like that. But still, that upgraded gear isn't better than the like the four hundred from from Savage. That's not going to sit here and. Well, remember, you'll have the four hundred from the raid as well because the mm -hmm. twenty four man drop will up, up use the upgrade. Yeah, so you'll get the upgrade there. But I'm saying that yeah. as far as it goes, like it helps catch you up. Gil yeah. doesn't push you out ahead where in previous games like it was and that's actually one of the things like we kind of talked about like you, you think some of these changes that they bring in and how many systems then are impacted because imagine if you could buy the best level gear in game with guild now you technically yeah. can if someone's selling those those clears right so in a weird way there could be that sense of, of pay to win but in the uh, in, in the realistic and more modern uh, approach of it, because I can't go out and buy a 400 or a 410 piece of gear, uh, you know, f with yeah. Gil, Gil doesn't necessarily become the be all end all. Like, and it has been in the past. Like, if you want to get this, you're going to have to go grind. I'll all be of honest. This stuff I, out. I feel like Gil has never really been a thing in 14 when it comes to end game stuff. Yeah, outside, like you said, potions and food, yeah. and and uh, Jelly was pointing out glamours. Uh, for yeah. those people who like to Glamour's do that. true end game. And, and, well, and again, once you buy your house, like, you know, yeah. it's like, what, what are you doing with it? 
But the glamour system isn't set up in a way to make it function like a true in game. Mm -hmm. So if the glamour system was a um, a chest that had the number of slots for the number of unique appearances available in game, and they were grayed out, and it could either maybe give you a hint towards the source, maybe like a hint like Blue Mage, where it tells you where it's at, or it could tell you specifically it drops from X boss, and every time you collected it, you could add it to this, and there was this total collection, and there were checkpoints along the way, and there were mm -hmm. achievements. This entire system where you could play the game solely around glamour and it be more than just something that i post on other forums or i change daily because i like to then i could see you getting frustrated when changes to the game change glamour but right now glamour is very much an afterthought in this game it's something they put in and they sure. they basically entertain but they don't treat it with the level of of respect that it could be considered pay to win yeah. in my so beyond progression, though, uh, you have uh, retainers also offer the service of ventures and gathering materials. Essentially, uh, having more retainers, having the like, even if you're not going to stock all of them, or you do pull a Chris instead of buying one, you could go and just make all your other characters. So in theory, you could actually have a lot of retainers just with your basic subscription. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. eight characters. Uh, we're talking that sixteen retainers that you could have access to that could be going gathering. Now you need a buddy. Because in this system, to have that kind of system, you need somebody to transfer to yeah. and from, to invite you into the if free you company. Cost more than eight characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, even that, like even with those eight you characters. Could, you, could mail, you could mail within the same server. Not you to could. yourself, though. You can mail within the same server, just not to yourself. You, you still cannot need... mail from one of your characters to your own character? No. Yeah. No. Huh. No, you cannot. They fixed that, didn't they? Hmm? Like when you could send yourself a friend request. <laughs> it's like, friend, <laughs> please. The, um, no, so that's the way, but like you just need that, they, that go between either another account. Some people do another account. Some people do uh, a friend or like the, your free company chest, even though that, that thing is a slow mess to so sometimes have to deal with. But beyond that, so from a gathering perspective, this guy's ties back into like, what is your definition of winning? We talk about like Gil and it having no worth, but there are still people out there whose goal is to have max cap on Gil. Uh, and they, and it's shown off like you, you know, it's like, man, look, it's kind of like their high score. So for some people from a crafting perspective, from a gathering perspective, from that market dominance perspective, winning is having the most gill and yeah. thus there could be. And, and, and that's where for me, the definition of pay to win uh, is gray and it's a slippery slope because uh, it's, it's all about what makes the individual and it has to be individualized because there's nothing that I think any of us will ever agree on a hundred percent concrete lock it down is that do you feel compelled to spend money to achieve your goals in a way that feels uh that, that crosses a line uh and that and that's very hard a hard thing to define because it still varies by individual i'm not somebody who feels compelled to spend money on an additional amount no matter if it had more seats or if it had more speed or have had any of those things i am somebody who will spend money to go to fan fest and happen to get some of that stuff secondary i'm, I'm going to fan fest not to get the bike but because i'm going for that experience but that for me is not pay to win uh, so, so you're not say. like me where you want to buy the odin statue for the emote and then the statue is like oh, a free gosh. Thing i i love that that exists <laughs> i love that that exists but um, you know for me emotes aren't winning the game I, I i fall into the classic definition um to the point where i don't have a, a a stance yet on selling clears i think if someone's willing and has the the gill and someone's willing to to carry them i i've been carried through content before for free uh, you know it's like it's really kind of like what's the what's the relationship and standing here I, 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 so but I, if unless someone's selling me you know like 400 410 gear um you know for cash I actually don't think I'd be the kind of person who, who purchases it, but just to feel like, you know, is that I, I how they cross the line? If if there was a pay to, what would they have to do that's, to that's, make something pay to win? That's the great question, and that's perfect to to bring us into our next comment uh, from Roche here. Uh, writing because it's a, you know what is it? What would they have to do? And some people brought up the fact that in game you can purchase gear that gives you XP boosts. So beyond yeah. bike speed, it's, let's, you know, here's uh, okay, so, so he says. The Eastern Garb for 30% experience boost that was part of the Stormblood pre-order. Uh, I know there is a Recruit a Friend one, Moogle Cap from ARR pre-order, and the Eastern Lord Lady Garb that is up to a level 30 experience boost. I see how this is a small advantage, but it's not game-breaking and it's still not pay to win. You cannot buy the best gear 
or by your way of beating the end or story content, I will reiterate, um, it cuts off. Uh, it has a pay. <laughs> yeah. So, so like to kind of interpret how I, I read that comment, like what, what makes the thing pay to win, in my opinion, is that you have to, you have to be willing to give them some unbreakable advantage, some distinct advantage that somebody else can't make up for. So when we talk about like level gym potions, mm -hmm. when we talk about, because this yeah. comment kind of reminds me of this exact conversation we had when they first talked about story skips and level skips. Um, I, I think people oftentimes forget what it was like to be a new player and they forget that they are not doing that to cheapen their experience, to cheapen your experience. They are doing that to make their experience possible. So yeah. giving somebody a faster leveled character or giving somebody an instant character that's 10 levels below you does not immediately make them better than you. It doesn't even give them access to end game because they're still 10 levels behind you. They still yeah. have to play through the current expansion. So there, there isn't a win there. If somebody met you in real life and you said, oh my gosh, I play Final Fantasy 2. And they're like, yeah, so like my dad's this crazy multimillionaire and I like to just buy everything I can <laughs> buy in games. And I have 67 accounts and across those 67 accounts, they each have 40 characters that are 10 levels below the current cap and they're all caught up on all the story except for the current expansion. What part of what that person told you makes you envy them? Well, I, I, I would love to be a, a son of a multimillionaire. <laughs> but is that it? Like, for any part of their final fantasy? Do they all have Odin statue emotes? Because then I'll be jealous. <laughs> so, like, I don't yeah. see how a level skip and a story skip causes that person to win. They still have to play through the current content. Yeah, yeah. And uh, even with this... Can I add... To yeah, please, 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 please. Yeah. Um, even with this XP thing where they're like, oh, they could get up to level 30. I mean, really? Until you're about 50, 60, you're not going to start feeling the, your job anyway. And even then, your job changes a lot at 70. Mm -hmm. So getting people to level 30 as fast as possible so they can unlock their job. I feel like the it would be good if the XP boost was just built into the game, but it's yeah, not and, and that's that where bad. And that's where it definitely falls into the end of the slippery slope. Um, uh, Chili, do you want to read, the, read our next comment here from uh, Lucas? Yeah, sure, I don't mind. Um, uh, Lucas Rodriguez I would not call it pay to win but it is a slippery slope give them a yard and they take a mile it is outrageous the cost of this mount when you consider it cost almost the price of Stormblood don't let the dislikes discourage you from talking about this kind of topic the Fantasy 14 community in general is in a bubble that doesn't like their being criticised and defend their game no matter what I would like to be able to gift like to get all the all by just by playing the game but $15 a month is not enough for all right <laughs> and then it gets cut off yeah see here there we go back to the cameras sweet so Sorry. yeah D is it a slippery slope though you know they introduced the uh the, the cash shop i believe with uh when they introduced heaven's word right like that was something they announced yeah. when they announced heaven's word and i was there next to, to fusion from a3 radio and gamerscape and he he stood up and just went boo like he was not <laughs> happy and the and cash shops I think, you know, the cash shop bought the EU data center. Like that's, yeah. they, they, they are like, this isn't, you Thank know, you. The, yeah, I it's guess. like, <laughs> well, maybe it bought us too. Maybe it bought the EU and other data center uh, as well. And so, um, you know, back to the kind of Chris's original kind of thought and into this, that it's, you know, not just a slippery slope, but like, what, what would Square have to do that essentially would make that? Um, you know, what, what would it be? Would it be that you could buy permanent XP boosts? Like, would it be that you could buy uh like additional rerolls like how how let's say you see the loot drop if you for cash could pony up and see and get another opportunity getting is that is that crossing the line what, what's crossing, crossing the, line? the line so what yeah give me some examples of crossing you, the line you have to not you have to not let what one person chose to pay for stomp on somebody else's uh, sense of accomplishment. So Zoel says, you know, I think Square, Square Enix does a horrible job of protecting players' accomplishments. They got ahead of the curve on Gahoon on WoW. And so basically what WoW will do is they'll put an achievement in that uh, will be like clear. So Gahoon is the final boss of the current raid tier. And so if you clear that, 
before a certain patch, before a certain time, they'll give you something. And so in the past, we've had like glory of the Raider achievements in WoW, where if you clear it before a certain date, you get a mount. If you clear it after that date, you still get the achievement, but you don't get the mount. And so when we talk about this mount and what this means in this slippery slope that we think Square Enix is going down, like, and I think our last comment is going to really shine on it, is... What does this mount do that is so game breaking? What does this mount give somebody with this mount that's going to make somebody else without this mount's achievement look like junk? And so one of the things I asked you when we were having this debate offline is, well, where this is going to really shine is when Shadowbringers drops. When Shadowbringers drops and there is a wave of open world content mm -hmm. to clear and getting to the end of it first could help. Um, it, it could help you get into the in-game raids faster. It could help you get ahead of any lag bosses that everybody runs into because you're literally faster than the wave of the average person. Um, my question to you was, long-term damage to the game, does Square Enix give any sort of honor, achievement, or recognition to the world first? If they give server-first or world-first achievements, then this mount is absolutely a problem. Yeah, and they don't, which is yeah. the thing. And the community does because, like we said, that we can track when you get that achievement. Um, so sure. there can be the sense that within the community, we can you can have that. But Square Enix, there's no server-wide, you know, hey, you cleared the game and the story first. Because in one reason, and I don't think they'll ever do that, which is a good thing, is because they do want people to enjoy the story. That's one reason yeah. why the raid doesn't drop the, the day the expansion drops is they don't want people to skip everything to get to the raid to get to the clears because beyond just clearing the story there is that world first raid uh, world first race for the raid and so the mount yeah. isn't going to help you in the raid whatsoever right. the remember, uh, you do get a raid for it though it's not world's first you remember you do get an exclusive mount from being savage mm -hmm. right but from a world first perspective again like yeah. talking about how do you compel somebody to feel like they have no choice? If their goal of winning is if they get in a special achievement in the game that shows that says that they were the first person to clear the story, or even let's say when you like, let's say Savage, let's take this out from the mount. Let's go to the Savage World First Raid. And then let's say that they had like, oh, if you if you spend thirty dollars, you get to wear this special earring that is going to increase your defense, you know, ten percent more than the current cap that exists you know, that gives you an immediate advantage. So immediately anybody yeah. who's doing world first feels like they have to go spend the money so that they can compete in trying to achieve their world first goals. So then to the point of open world in that race, since the game doesn't necessarily reward the first person or the first person on the server with clearing it because they want you to enjoy the story, the, 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 the only thing that you get is kind of a personal satisfaction. You have a personal winning goal. And from the community's perspective, if you feel compelled to spill the money, that's more individualized than it is for, um, you know, the, like a whole section of, uh, like in WoW, Chris just told me this, and that's where I was, I was drawing the parallels into WoW, is that you have people who train, who buy potions that make them jump, move faster, all these different kinds of things. So it ends up being this whole thing for how they can clear and get to the level cap, you know, the fastest. There is a race. Right. And, and without continuing to, you know, so so the reason I look to WoW here is WoW is much older. So many times when 14 makes a mistake, WoW has already made that mistake. So WoW has mounts that are faster than all the other mounts. Their gladiator mounts move at 315. Everything else is capped at 280 or 310. Their gladiator mounts move physically faster than every other mount in the game. When they're flying on the ground, they move at 100 percent like every other mount. Current expansions do not allow flying on launch. So therefore, that from the world first perspective, the only time this mount speed matters, mm -hmm. that's gone. Yeah. It doesn't mean See, it. Uh, with Final Fantasy XIV, they also don't allow mount speed bonuses at launch. Uh, so when, all you would have to do is make this mount move like the others, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. guessing because there's no bonus, therefore it can't give the bonus. Well, that's, like that's, this, that's, the, that's the question. Yeah. That's the ultimate yeah. question the video asked because it says that um, it has it where, where the mount thing is. And it, you get the mount speed bonus as soon as you clear the MSQ. And yeah. so it, that technically in, could be translated that it automatically is unlocked for the zones because you, you know, the, the zones already have it available. They just, you just haven't cleared the MSQ. And so if you haven't cleared the MSQ to get the bonus, like if you go right now and take that mount, you can go faster in the zones and you haven't cleared the story. 
uh, still yeah. in the zones because the, that's one of the per because legitimately yeah. the reasoning that they gave and I, I believe them is that it, the bike looks ridiculously weird when it's going normal mount speed yeah. and the, at the one star speed it actually looks and feels better <laughs> because it's like yeah. well this is this is awkward it's going too slow and uh, just believe I don't think they to justify themselves if they want to make <laughs> what they just give the lower the lower out faster then just do it. So what if they just give everyone the mount speed bonus one with, with Shadowbringers? Yeah, I think that's just and, default. It's like, here's the, the new default speed. Or honestly, I think yeah. the easiest thing is to literally just say that the bike just goes slow and then you do the MSQ and there you go. It's not, not an issue. It's a non-issue. But I want to I want to bring us into our last, uh, uh, our last comment because uh, when we talk about the open world, when we talk about winning, when we talk about these things, I think Mioni yeah. had a really good point here. Mioni is going to be on our podcast uh, this Sunday. If you guys haven't um, haven't heard, we're going to be doing a really cool one with him uh, this time. But anyway, so Mione writes, There is practically a lull in any open world content that would require you to be faster on a mount than in others. If there were a case uh, the open world serves something other than hunts that you really don't need a race for, like treasure maps or fates, then maybe, uh, and even slightly, it more could be an issue. But as it stands that there are... Uh, that nothing that the level of character without the mount misses out on versus that of a new player, the SDS Fenrir, others uh, than its looks. And I think Mioni kind of really summarizes it really well. And at the same time, kind of like, oh, it hurts because it's like, I really would love for us to have some uh, open world content. Well, <laughs> more will be more important when this expansion drops, but just because to people start. try and get the upgrades. Right. But the, the thing is, is that getting to the hunt first doesn't necessarily yeah. ensure that you're, you know, because typically if, you're slightly decent, you know, you're going to wait for everybody to pull. Now there's going to be a period in time where getting to the mount hunt, actually people might be like, please get on your faster mount and get over here. But by that time you've cleared the story. So everybody's got the one star anyway. So it's really a non-issue yeah. that, but as far as it goes, the only thing I could see is that the mount speed could increase your ability to get to fate to fate, which could increase your XP per hour, which increases your ability to level before you've cleared the story once. And then after that, it becomes a new point. So it also lets you get gathering node to gathering node faster or mm -hmm. leave yeah. to leave faster. As long as you're not flying, because the nice thing about it, like it's kind of interesting, as you said, with wow, flying is faster. Everybody's the same on the ground. Here, flying is everybody's at the same speed. Uh, and then the ground is the only di is the only difference here. <laughs> um, and even with fates, how yeah. many people here really use fates on their first job yeah. level up the main yeah. How many use them? What like ever? I see ever. fates, and I like. Oh man, yeah. I wish there was a reason to go do the fate because I, I always enjoyed fates. Oh, I remember it, the old fate grind it when two point oh and that <laughs> launch with Northern Fanalan. Well, it's it, as far as like, people <laughs> were, are trying to find the most efficient way, but like I just yeah. can't fathom how it is that fates don't drop like lock boxes or various things like we already have that decipher into you know different random you know different random roles i just think that would be a really cool system percentage. what's up it's such a small percentage of the population that uses them the last time on stream somebody said that they just want a house because they want a garden and gardens are the reason that having a house means you win over people who don't have a house my immediate response was to teleport to our housing district and run house to house to house to house to house none of those gardens have anything planted our garden didn't have anything planted <laughs> So it sounds like a solid thing. Oh, well, they're going to have it because they're going to be able to finish their fates and they're going to get down their challenge log. Okay, well, in my tooltip from now on, Square, show me the percentage of people that are even doing their challenge log. Hey, I'm it, doing my gold saucer challenge log. Least. I bet it's a bit. <laughs> gold saucer challenge log is really worth it. <laughs> yeah. Oh I my want gosh. my um, green mount thing. Yeah. The Cooper so it's the same as jump potions and everything else. Players being 10 levels behind everybody else, players who are not currently at level cap are not the problem. They're not making your game worse. They're not hurting you. In no way is their experience affecting yours, mm -hmm. other than the fact that, that they're speeding up your ability to get cues for content that are not at level cap. That's so, Talon, I, I've, I've actually bought <laughs> jump potions on two characters just because I've wanted to level up with friends. The, um, uh, I, I I've thought, already got a main character at 70, and yeah. so I bought one on um, Like Aether, an alternate, like as an alternate, right? Yeah, on, on two alts. It's usually I just thought, more generally accepted. Here, The thing, though, with yeah. that is that for me, I really wish that they would allow for more level syncing and doing the content as your friends level up together. Right now, it feels that, like, hey, you know, catch up, go buy a jump potion, and then we're ready to go, as opposed to 
well, why can't we actually group together and run this content and not have to drop party? Like the, just the simple fact that dropping parties between fates and dropping parties between fights, I think those two things, business-wise, like is it like the question that I bounce in my mind is like, it, it, was it easier for them just to add the jump potion and also more financially viable? Or is it to say like, you know, like if we could actually do the content together where the, the battle scales to the fact that I'm coming with you or, or two other friends of ours are coming with us so that way we can, instead of, Hey, thanks for buying the game. You either need to purchase a jump potion or or we'll see you in 80 hours um, when you finish the story. And that in and of itself is ridiculous. It is ridiculous in my opinion. I don't have a, a, a fundamental yeah. issue with the jump potion. I do have a fundamental issue with it's jump potion or we'll see you in 80 hours as opposed to yeah. level sync content to go together. And that seems like a fun time. That seems like a time where... It doesn't matter, no, like you know. That's what New Game Plus is going to be. Uh, that's the question right. about it. Yeah, and that's yeah. that. That's the unknown. New Game Plus gives me a weird feeling in my stomach because I don't understand what the heck and how it's going to work. I hope that that is in fact what it ends up being because I would love to be able to experience this because uh, Shadowbringers should, if it did, does anything remotely like Stormblood, will bring in a lot of new people. Will bring in a lot okay. of new friends, and then again, there if we don't have a way to play together. Um, and the option is to pay or, or, or not. Yeah. Um, I don't think uh, the jump potion fundamentally is a problem. I think it, it, it doesn't make a player a good player or a bad player. A player is going to be who they are. You know, if they don't take time to go learn the job, it doesn't matter if they used a jump potion or not. They're not going to, they'll get, they'll get to cap one way or another and not know how to play because uh, the game doesn't, doesn't teach you that. Um, By the way, Callan, um, yeah, it's, it's okay if you're new to the game. But if you're living up a second or third job and you've already been through the main story quest several times, that's when you start to be like, oh, okay, I don't really feel like leveling up again just because my uh, met people are a different server. I wonder if the like, world visit uh, the world visit system yeah. will also help with some of that. I, you do. Know. I think it'll help. Mm -hmm. I think it'll help. Oh, yeah. The world visit system is that much closer to saying, okay, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna somehow encourage players of this level. To go visit world x or or whatever mm -hmm. because you couldn't come help me brian all your characters were at 50 mm -hmm. when i joined yep. you in arr yep. you were capped and so i i, I followed you i followed you around my experience i followed and, you around and then we grouped up for fates in dungeons yeah. but it, yeah. it was it was annoying but there was plenty of times that it was literally better off for you to just go be in a dungeon with jelly because i was doing fetch quests for minophilia for three hours yeah and I don't need your help with that. I mean, I came from having other gaming experience. So there was nothing this game taught me between levels one and 50 that was truly unique to this game. And if it was, hey, how does this system work? Hey, what is their take on this? You could talk about it with me in voice chat. Mm -hmm. So it was basically me in voice chat with you and, and Jelly and um, you know Tim and, and all of them. And I was playing on my own for weeks. I mean, it was rough. Mm -hmm. Really, they just need to add a as we've said it before, you win, they just need to add a version of the novice hall for people who jump potion. Just like, and here you go. You're going to walk you, you through you these challenges. You jump potion, and then you get like a two or three sort mm -hmm. of fights where you learn your rotations. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there is an, kind of another like thing that obviously is here is that when when we're talking about these things and these discussion you know formats. Um, there is the sense that uh, kind of, you know, what Lucas says is like, yeah, a lot of people, you know, um, yeah, or, or fear critique of the game. You know, they, they fear people coming in and saying anything uh, negative about it. And I honestly am, am of, the, of the opinion that whenever you try to like suppress or say that like another person's like I, I look at the official forums and it's like somebody would be like, hey, I think this might be a fun idea. And then when the responses are like word vomiting back at them like we de-incentivize the vocal minority de-incentivizes you know it doesn't mean that the devs have to do it but we like there's been this weird thing kind of boiling and, and i and i've seen this um you know on reddit on the official forums just of people just like shut trying to shut down the discussion the conversation because they feel that the game and people have said the game is perfect don't like we don't yeah. suggest anything i think that in and of itself is the the fastest way that this game comes to an end i think it's the fastest way that um you know the the community just like devours itself and the fact that i think that a lot of people responded in interesting ways to this video 
in 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 a way of like you know we, it just it was really surprising and interesting but at the same time there was a level of concern that i have for some people in the community thinking that anything is perfect and then it has to be defended at all costs against you know and in, in my case i'm not an you know an outsider coming in it's like i'm been playing and talking about this game for nine years uh you know it's like yeah like we we have opinions and we have critique and i think the difference between there's uh, between insulting or saying that the game is trash versus actually saying like, hey, like here's some things that they need to, that, w- that would be really good that they would work on that would benefit the community. But there is this weird backlash. What do you guys, have you guys felt that or seen that or is that just kind of me, um, you know, I'm not trying to be like, you know, like high, like on any kind of pedestal, just me as I post, uh, you know, content out there for the community. Like what's what your, Chili, you make your content creator, you do a lot of podcasts. On what's your take? Uh, this community, as much as I love it, really doesn't like. Um, everyone seems to like to have the same opinion about things, like um, when jump potions. We've been talking about jump potions a lot, but as soon as jump potions were announced, everyone jumped on the "oh, it's horrible, it's going to be pay to win," um, and the forums don't help that. I mean, as much as I love this web, this game. The forums are something I would never touch because I've heard so many horror stories about them. But doesn't that do a disservice to the developers themselves that they're not necessarily like, not that like I I would argue that they need to implement all my ideas or the game sucks because that's ridiculous. But doesn't that do a disservice by shutting you down from communicating that some ideas that you might have doesn't mean that every idea has to be executed, right? Like no, not every idea needs to be executed because so many, every, there's so many people playing this game. There's so many different ideas that, yeah, it, everything will contradict itself. You should. Uh, when they say the customer's always right, they're not right. Then no. <laughs> yeah. What do you What do you say, Chris? I I think that what Square needs to do as far as um, communicating with the, the community better. Is that where you'd like me to go off of that? Yeah. Uh, I, I think that they try very hard. I think a lot of times we're quick to criticize. A lot of times when they make a change that we consider pay to win or we make it, they make a change like Eureka or Blue Mage or whatever where people think they're ignoring part of the community, they forget just how big this community is. Um, so this whole discussion, we've been talking about this like there is just this black and white solution that square needs to understand but there are there are multiple communities across the world that all have different views of how they play the game and within them there's a whole bunch of individuals who have their own views of how to play the game and so when we we say something's pay to win or not pay to win and and square just needs to follow our definition it, it is a little bit inherently naive and I don't think they set out to make this bike faster because they're like, Oh, well, this is going to give this advantage to people that went to fan fest. And then they're going to be able to level in Shadowbringers faster. And in that way, the people that the only fans we care about, the ones that went to fan fest don't have Raub on extreme. And that is our secret plan. Like, I don't think that there's some Illuminati plot here. I think they had a saying that twirling their mustaches as they did it. We'll make millions, see? Millions. Sorry. (laughs) I think the correct design decision was okay, we it it doesn't look as cool when it's slow. We have the capabilities to go faster now. Back in the day, mounts were limited by memory and and hardware. Those limits are no longer there. We don't want to change all the previous mounts, but it does give us the opportunity to change this one. And I don't think it breaks anything. And so then they did it. And then they moved on about their day. And they have 20 million other things to do. So the same with jump potions. Okay, what does it take to get people caught up in this game? We have to have a way for old players to be able to go back and play with new players. Well, we're not ready to do that. We're working on Story Plus and all this, but it's hard. It's complicated. Okay, well, should we just tell new players to shove off for two years? Well, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, well, what's something we can do affordably with our development resources? We don't have to remake a bunch of old content that the old players won't go back and play. We don't have to make a bunch of new content for new players that only gets played once. And we don't have to make some complicated system where they can play together because we're not ready to implement that. Okay, we'll just throw a potion at it. Yeah. Done. Fixed it. Perfect. Next item. I think they have so many items in this game and they spend their time developing systems like Eureka and like Blue Mage, which are huge systems, whether or not you like them. And I would way rather them take risks on things like Blue Mage and Eureka 
than spend all that dev time coming up with the perfect solution to avoid a level potion or to avoid a mount being a fraction of a percent faster. I think that's definitely well said. Um, with that, though, let's go ahead and wrap up the conversation. We've uh, we've talked a lot about it. I don't think we've come to a consensus, though, because I still think that each individual person is going to be paid to win. And I think essentially that uh, it's going to be a, a, a constant balance that we as a community need to continue to voice. And that's kind of why we want to keep our voices heard, because they, the devs need to know. Because if they, uh, because all of a sudden, like, if you want to suppress the conversation and the, and the, the opinion, at some point you're going to find yourself on the opposition of that. It's inevitable you'll find yourself uh, being oppressed. And being told not to not to share your thoughts, and that's really that's what we want to prevent here. That's one of the things that we work hard yeah. um, as a part of driving discussion and respectful discussion, a discussion in which that uh, we can make our points known. We don't attack the individuals; we attack the arguments, and that even includes our own. Chili's repping his merch shirt, yes sir, yes sir, <laughs> and then I like the Christmas hat there, the little Thank Christmas S H I T hat. Uh, <laughs> And um, with that, uh, uh, like, uh, blah, 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 I'm drawing a whole blank mentally on what I was about to say. With that, Chili, what do you, what, what do you got in your world? What, uh, where can people find you? Where can people follow you at? Uh, if you want our YouTube, it's P uh, um, at PSU.com, I think. Uh, Twitter, you can follow me, MGR underscore Chili. Or on Twitch, which I should, I should really get back to into it because I haven't streamed in so long. Uh, you can follow me at PSU Live. Or you can go follow us at Moogle Garbrown Radio on Twitch as well, which is a, a Final Fantasy podcast. You got any? Uh, are you got any guest appearances on any other podcasts coming up? Uh, no, not for a while. No, no, no. This was the last guest appearance. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. uh, Chris, what you got? What you working on? Uh, I'm gonna be playing Smash tomorrow. That's the only thing we haven't yeah. talked about. Yeah, this. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be playing Smash tomorrow, and uh, that's that's about it. I am looking forward to WoW has 8.1 coming out on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, people have been talking about whether or not BFA is dead. And the fact that we decided that 8.0, we know if it's good or bad entirely before 8.1 drops seems a little ahead of the game. So, so let's see if maybe one content patch can actually help shape a little bit of our views about how this expansion is going. <laughs> Yeah, and so, um, and then for me, like you said, we're playing Smash tomorrow. Um, I'm working on my Monk controller guide, so I'm studying up on rotations uh, in, in, in that nature. And then we'll be back with some more, uh, you know, 11. And so there's just, it's just a really fun way to end the year. Chris and I have been playing a lot of Black Ops 4. That game, for as good as it is, it's, it has random issues. Like we, we couldn't get six people into a group last night, but we figured out a way to hack it. We had to go to customs and then go back into the main thing. So it's like they had a 22 gig patch. You would think that they would they would fix whatever problems. That <laughs> just it is what it is. Um, with that, guys, you can follow us uh, Delmonic B or Work to Game on on Twitter. We hope you do. We uh, you know. I, We've been trying to get better at it, you know, so sending out more uh, more tweets. Obviously, if you're watching us here on YouTube, we hope you subscribe. We hope you uh, join our community and check out our Discord channel. Uh, and join us on uh, Community Game Nights, which we've been hosting on Monday. We kind of do been doing a smorgasbord of 14 and 11. Uh, and who knows what else we'll be playing. We'll probably be doing some more Smash for the month of December. Uh, and then you can obviously check us out here on Twitch at Work 2 Game as well um for all that for everybody casually hardcore episode 13 we're gonna wrap it up uh thank you so much for joining us hopefully uh you leave us a comment let us know your thoughts hopefully this has been a really good and positive discussion for your day uh and we hope uh you have a fantastic week but for work to game my name's brian my name's chris my name is chili we hope you have a fantastic day take care oh hello were you expecting somebody Chuck like? <laughs> well, I'll never tell where he is. Only that if you want to see your friend again, you should totally hit subscribe. And maybe even a thumbs up. Thumbs down don't make me happy. And when I'm not happy, something happens to Chuck. <laughs> I'm not joking. Goodbye. Subscribe. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. See you next time.